Over on page two, I can see this page isn't complete. There's some content still to come. There's a text box here where I'm going to in bring in the introductory paragraph for this piece. I could type it myself, but I'm a designer, not a writer. I have a file here from Microsoft Word that I can simply drag and drop to the page. It's as easy as it was with pictures. Although in this case, one difference is with text, you can see the text input cursor so you know exactly where the text is going to land. And for example, I could drop it here up inside this headline in between the N character and the E character, but I don't want it there. I'm going to stop messing about now and put it back down in the box where it's intended to go. Just release the cursor and it will import the text into the box. Perfect. Now, I also see a spot down on the bottom corner of the page where I plan to use an image. And I've been waiting for that image from my designer. And I'm going to put it on the page. And you'll see the image that I'm dealing with is a native Illustrator file. The good news is, the great news is in Quark Express 8, we support the direct placing of Illustrator files just like we do with EPSs or PDFs in earlier versions. This makes it very easy to work with Illustrator, right? All I can do, all I need to do is take that Illustrator.ai file and drop it onto the page, just like I would do with any other kind of graphic. And I can adjust it using the picture handles and the, all of the tools like I would with any image. It's a very nice, easy way to integrate your layout with your vector art that's coming in from Illustrator. Now, I'm almost done with my page. Um, and as I said on page one, maybe things are looking a bit too square. So why don't I do something a bit different here by adding in a drop shadow, styling this, this number up a little bit. The drop shadow was very easy. I applied that using the measurement palette, already in Quark Express 7. But I don't like how it looks. I'd like to adjust it. I'm a designer. I don't want to put in a bunch of numbers. I don't know what the numbers mean. I'd like to be able to visually do it. So if I look at the controls in the measurement palette, we've added in these small tick controls. So I can use those and visually change the angle or the skew of my uh, drop shadow to make it look how I want it to look. And I can visually make the changes without having to guess what the numbers would be. Tweak and adjust until I get the look that works just right for me. Of course, if I want to put in those numbers, I can do that. So we're almost done on this page. Maybe I'd like to tilt that eight a bit. And even though I'm still in my text content mode, I can turn boxes without having to do any tool switching. I just go to the handles of the outside of the box and move slightly outside. My rotation cursor will be activated and I can manipulate that box effortlessly. 